It's Rhema Praise time again, and we have a great program for you today. Thank you for being with us. I want to say hi to all the regulars and anybody that's new that's coming by. Hey, just stop right there. Stay there for the, the duration of this program, and I know it'll be a blessing to you. You know, honey, we have a great message for today. It's called Keep Your Appointment with, with God. God. You know, it's so important to follow the plan that God has for your life. Right, right it is. And we, we talk about that a lot yeah. because we know that when you follow God's plan for your life, you're, you're going to live a ha much happier life. Right, and then when you keep an appointment to pray, with, pray every day with God. Read your Bible every day. Yes. I know I, when I'm teaching in, in the Bible school, uh, there is a minister that uh, he 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 was ha it was his prayer time. Uh -huh. So his his assistant knocked on the door and said uh, that he had, and it was a very distinguished person mm -hmm. that was there to visit him and to see him, and 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 so he said, just set him in the ante room, tell tell him I have a divine appointment with God first. That's good. That's good. That's know. good. We <laughs> so, should always start our day with a divine, divine appointment, appointment with God. God. Why don't we yes. go where I'm preaching that message called Keep Your Appointment with God. The title of my, my message tonight, Keep Your Appointment with God. Keep Your Appointment with God. You know, appointments are realities in our life. How many of you have appointments that you have to make? Yeah. A lot of, lot of my local people here, business people, they have appointments tomorrow already set up. I know my son-in-law, he has, runs his business, and I know he's already got his appointment set up. You know, this is true in our natural lives, but it also needs to be true in our spiritual lives. We need to keep the, certain appointments with God. You know, I, I, in one of my classes I teach, I talk about uh, R.C. Gillick, I think it was. I, I have to remember. He, uh, he, they said, they told him that he had a very distinguished visitor, and he told him, he said, you put him in the ante room and tell him to wait. I have an appointment with God first. Come on. It's about time that we realize that we keep our appointment with God ahead of everything else. It seems like in the world we're living in today, that everything else is in front of God. See, I want to look at an incident in a guy's life. It's found in Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. All right. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And, and as he led the flock back to, to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and beheld, the, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to look, God called him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Then he said, Don't draw near this place. Take off the sandals off your feet for this place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters for I know their sorrow. So I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians to bring them up from the land to a good and large land to a land flowing with milk and honey, the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Pezzarites and the Hibbites and the Jebusites. Now therefore behold the cry of the children. Now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel has come to me and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Now, this is a particular time in the history of Israel, the tribe of Israel, the children of Israel. 
that they were living in Egypt. Now, they went to Egypt in the beginning because of Joseph that had become the prime minister of, of Egypt and there was a famine everywhere else but because God had showed Joseph how to stockpile, Egypt was the only place that had any food. Now, read that story. The story of Joseph is the most, uh, what's the word I want there? Anyway, it's the, most, it's the greatest story of forgiveness that you can read about humanity. Of course, the greatest story of forgiveness is Jesus Christ. But with humanity, it's one of the greatest stories that, that, that has ever been in humanity. And so the whole bunch of Israelites moved to Egypt. Now, everything was great as long as uh, Joseph was in power and as long as the pharaohs that knew about Joseph were in power. But when they came out of power, then the other pharaohs enslaved the Israelites and made them their slaves. And now here they are in severe bondage. They're they're at the whim and the wishes of the tyrannical uh, pharaohs. And they had been there about 400 years. And now they're in slavery. No sign of escape. No hope of anything better. But the Egyptian pharaoh forgot something. These are God's people. I think sometimes the devil forgets that we are God's people. He forgot that Ezra was a chosen people. We are a chosen generation. He forgot. You see, the other pharaohs and the other people, they had passed it down. This great God Jehovah of the Israelites. And, they, and he was honored. But now they're not doing so. And I think our, our generation has come to the place where God used to be honored, but he's not being honored anymore in this land like he should be. Come on now. Don't sit down on me now just when I'm doing preaching good. The great I am that God told Moses when he led them, when he led them out he said, who, who's going to, who, who am I going to say? He said, you tell him I am. The El Shaddai, the Almighty One, he had heard their cry and he said, enough is enough. And now God goes to the desert and finds an 80-year-old taking care of sheep, stinky, smelling sheep. This man, 40 years before, had gone from the palaces of Egypt to the pasture of sheep. He had gone from the sweet perfumed palaces and halls of the palace to stinky, smelly sheep out in the desert. This man had been miraculously saved from death as a baby. But now he's living oblivious to the power of God. He had tried to deliver Israel in his own strength, choosing to go with the Israelites rather than the Egyptians. He tried in his own strength and messed everything up. It ended in Disastrous results. He killed an Egyptian because he was beating one of the Israelites. And now he fled for his life, seeming a total failure, and ends up on the backside of nowhere, tending sheep. This is where God found Moses. Now why would God set up an appointment 
with Moses in the desert? Why not much earlier in his life? He had been there. He saved him as a baby. He put him in the palace. Maybe it was because now Moses was finally ready. He was through with himself. He was over his personal ambitions. And maybe it's because he was finally ready to listen to God. See, if we're going to get anywhere with God in our lives, if we're going to be used by God, you'll have to get past yourself. Moses himself did not realize this was his defined appointment to get his life back where it needed to be. See, Mo, God spoke to Moses out of the bush. You know, it seems that Moses had lived all of those years. As He told him, he said, this is the holy ground. Take off your shoes. And he went on and told him some things. I've chosen you. Moses is living out there on the backside of the desert thinking he's a failure. He messed up. But God gave him some new information. He said, it's not what you think. He might have told him, said, what are you hiding out here on the backside of the desert for? I'm going to take you to the front lines of Israel. You thought you were no good. You thought you'd missed it. I'm going to show you you haven't. But he had to set a little bush on fire to get his attention. There's some of you that need to look at some of these things that are happening in your life. God's trying to get your attention. Come on now, don't look at me like that. That burning bush is a type of the fire band that God wanted Moses to become. That would stand in front of Pharaoh and say, let my people go. God wanted Moses to go into those palace halls with the fire of God, not with the power of his fist that beat him guy to death. Hey, he wanted Moses to walk into that palace, into that throne room where Pharaoh was, and when Moses spoke, it would be God speaking. Now, people always talk about, well, that's the preacher. No. Wherever you're at, wherever you're working, whatever you're doing, when you speak, it should be God speaking that will pierce the hearts of the, of the hearer. You, in the workforce, can touch more people than I will ever touch from a platform or any of these other people will ever touch from a platform. It, we need to get the, it out of our head that you have to be on the platform to be a preacher. No, you can be a preacher for God where you're at. A witness, you might want to call it. See, I want to tell you why. Hey, man, Everybody said, oh, Moses stretched out his rod. No, when Moses stretched that rod, all of a sudden that rod, that was God's hand stretching out there. His hand become God's hand. We need to realize when we keep our appointment with God, doing what God has us to do, all of a sudden we're changed. We're not the same anymore. That's why we need to get the power. I was talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. See, when Moses went back to Egypt, it wasn't the same old Moses that left Egypt. It wasn't the man running for his life. It was the man coming back to give life. Come on now. This was a new Moses filled with the power of God, consumed with the power of God, called to lead the Israelites. He marched into Pharaoh's court and confronted him right there. When you get and have that divine appointment with God, you become bold and you're not afraid anymore. He came to show Israel that he was their deliverer. He was the vessel that God was going to use to deliver them. The man became an instrument in the hand of God. All of us can become instruments in the hand of God. As I said this morning when preaching, I said, we, the earthen vessels that are filled with the power of God, that's us. 
There are a lot of other people in the Bible that had divine appointments with God. Moses is not unique. He's not alone in having an appointment with God. Abraham had an appointment with God. He believed God and supernaturally was given a child that the posterity of that child still exists today. Gideon had an appointment with God and was changed from a fearful, hiding, whimpering individual to a mighty warrior and deliverer. Peter had an appointment with God and from that outspoken, impulsive fisherman, he became the solid, stable leader of the church. Man, when you get an appointment with God, God changed. Things changed. Paul had an appointment with God on the Damascus Road. He went from persecutor of the church to a missionary burning with the fire of God that took the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the known world at that time. He covered the known world at that particular time. Man, the hall of faith. And Hebrews 11 is full of people that had divine appointments with God. Hebrews 11, 32, 34. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and also David, Samuel the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lion, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned the flight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. When these people kept their appointment with God, something happened. Noah survived the flood. Abraham received the impossible. Moses no longer stuttered. David became a giant killer. Sarah was able to conceive the promised son. Peter, Peter became bold as a lion after he had denied Jesus. Now he becomes bold as a lion. Paul became a mouthpiece for God. These people in the Bible did mighty exploits for God. We can too if we'll keep our appointment with God. I want you to realize, look at this. Noah was not a preacher. He was just a man that kept an appointment with God. Abraham wasn't a preacher. He just a man that kept an appointment with God. Moses wasn't a, a minister, but he kept an appointment with God. David was a king. He wasn't a minister. I, what, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get people out of the idea that you got to be a minister to have an appointment with God to do something for God. Come on now. Sarah was just a wife. Peter was an old fisherman, but he did become a preacher. I've named several there, and Peter's the first one that's a preacher. Right? Now, they all lived for God, they were all, but they all had, had an appointment with God that changed their lives. Paul did become the mouthpiece for God. But out of just those few that I read, and you can go through the whole Bible, you'll find out that there's a whole bunch of people that were used that weren't preachers. But they had an appointment with God. Turn to your neighbor and say, have you had your appointment with God? Anybody get anything out of this tonight? Do you see, do you understand where, what God's trying to say to us tonight? He's setting the tone for this entire convention. The tone is keep an appointment with God every time you come in this room. Because if you do, you will be changed. I have called you here so that I may minister to you this week in a special way. If you will open your hearts and if you will receive me with the appointment that I want to make with you, you'll find that when you get back home, some things have already changed and you'll begin to see that the things you've been looking for, the things you've been believing for, they 
they will begin to happen. And you'll begin to wonder and say, how can this be? And I will remind you that you kept a divine appointment. And by keeping that divine appointment, you unleashed my power. Hallelujah to Jesus. That's what the Lord's saying. That's what the Holy Spirit's saying. Anybody get a hold of what I said there? Get a hold of it. It's important. Hallelujah. Everybody stand, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. There's some people here tonight. You have been feeling. I know we don't walk by feelings, but when the Spirit begins to move, how many of you know when the Spirit begins to move on the inside, there, there, there's, there, there, there's, there, I, don't, I don't have the, the words to utter in articulate speech. It's a, it's a, it's a scratching. It's, a, it's a, a something on the inside. How many know what I'm talking about? There's some of you that have had that. And God said, that's leading you to your divine appointment. If you're here and that's you, I'm not going to lay hands on you. You need to, this is a poem of you and God. I want you to come down here to the front, kneel, begin to pray, whatever. If that's you, come on. Come on. Right now, there's a lot of people who need to walk down here. You know, as my husband was talking about keeping your appointment with God, the scripture, honey, that came up on the inside of me, which I read a lot. Oh, you do, you do. I know that for a fact. Jeremiah 29, 11 right. in the New Living Translation. And I want to read this. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Right. And you know, I like to just hone in on the plans that God has for us. And I want to say to you, there's someone out out there that you're wondering about the path that you're going down. You're wondering about the plans that you thought that God had for you. And the reason that you're, you know, you're wondering about it and questioning is because it doesn't seem like that things are going just as you would thought they would go. And let me say, the Lord is saying that you may not understand the path that I have for you, says the Lord, but know that this path shall be for good and shall not be for disaster. And if you will follow me and not question and not wonder, I will lead you down the right path and it shall be well with you, says the Lord. Oh yeah, praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Man, it's always great when the word comes from the Lord it like that. It is, you know? it is. Uh, that's not in no script or anything. No. That's the Holy Spirit Actually, speaking. I didn't even know I was going to say that <laughs> right. before we started. Well, praise yes, the Lord. But hey. God knew. And somebody said, well, if that's for me. Well, my dad used to say, if it, if it applies, then grab it, hold that's of it. Right. So if it applies right. for you, grab a hold of it. And you know... As, well, the Lord started speaking, but what I what I wanted to say, you know, sometimes uh, Paul would say, "This is me speaking." Yeah. Um, I just wanted to encourage encourage you that I look at that the plans that God has for us will be for good and not for disaster. Right. And so, right. even though disastrous situations may come, I say, "Nope, God's going to turn this around right. for our good." Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hey, you know, hon, we have a monthly, uh, well, actually about every six weeks, uh, uh, magazine called yes. the Word of Faith magazine. And man, in it, it has all kinds of good stuff. I mean, I, the first part in there is, is I have my heart to heart, yes. which I give a little word. And then we have, uh, you know, there's a timeless teaching by dad. Mm -hmm. And then, then there'll be... Uh, teaching by somebody, uh, you know, uh, how, the issue I happen to be looking at is uh, on prayer, and here's uh, uh, one, Kurt of our DeBall, one of our instructors, yes. Kurt, uh, Kurt DeBalls, and then, uh, you know, we go in and, here. And it tells where we're going to be. Right, right, right. Sometimes it talks about one of our grads and what they're doing. Here, here's another one talks about uh, two-fold calling the CEO and youth pastor. Uh, you know, talks about somebody that's doing uh, both. Yes. And then uh, here, here, here's just a lot I, of... And there's a seed thought, if you'll keep on going. Yeah, yeah, you have thoughts. a seed thought. There it is, yes, seed thought. Yes, and, and a page for the children. And a page for... And then I usually have a something An article. Here, yes, an article you do. in here. You do. And then, uh, it, yeah, there it is. Don't be moved. 
And just and you'll have one, and sometimes Craig has one, sometimes a niece, just different ones. That's right. And if you're interested in the uh, Word of Faith, uh, you can go online to rhema.org and you can read it online. You That's can download right. it if you want, or you can sign up and we'll send you a hard copy. I like the hard copy. I know, but it's a whole <laughs> lot easier if they just download it yourself. I know, that is self. true. They you can know, do both. They can do both. They can. Hey, uh, you know, th this week. That's right. Yeah. We're in Montgomery, Alabama. Yes. Uh, tonight, uh, well, actually Sunday night. Sunday night. Sunday night mm -hmm. uh, through Tuesday at Harvest Church. Pastor Bill and Fred McNeese, you can go to Raymond.org, find out more. Yes. And then we're going to move over on Wednesday through Friday over to Fayetteville, Georgia, which is just a part of the, of the Atlanta area. That's right. At the Body of Christ International with uh, Dr. Joe and Marginita Ripley. And yes. we're looking forward to those. If you happen to be in that area, please come out and see us, okay? Yes. And if you got friends in that area, call them and tell them about it and get them to come out. And next weekend is Rama College weekend right here on the Rama campus yes. in Broken Era. And it's a time that you can learn about Rama and perhaps find out what God has planned for your life. Well, in just about two weeks, we got... Uh, Called arms, the men's That's conference. That's right, the so men's need, conference. Hey, hey, go to rama.org slash CTA and find out all about that. And we have a great offer. I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the announcer tell you all about our great offer that we have. And we're gonna get out of here and thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. I'm talking to you about the Holy Spirit. A lot of times all we know about the Holy Spirit is a few of the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. There's a whole lot more to know about the Holy Spirit than just a few uh, speaking in tongues, prophesying, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. That's the reason some of you are not living overcoming lives because you don't know Him. The Person of the Holy Spirit, a powerful four CD series by Kenneth W. Hagan to help you become better acquainted with the Holy Spirit. Amen, Jesus is coming in the cloud. Not those clouds up there, no. We're gonna be caught up together in the clouds, in the glory. And you see, it won't make any difference whether you're dead or whether you're alive. When you die, you go into that glory. And Kenneth E. Hagan's The Glory of God CD, plus the Holy Spirit and His Gifts study course. Get all of these amazing faith tools right now for only $34.95 by calling 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night at rhema.org. Do it right now. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rhema Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.